Hi guys, Rick Baxter here with Cost Control Software. I get a lot of questions from uh, uh, customers and prospective customers about uh, scheduling software for their NAV system. You see I've got NAV running here. I thought I would take a minute and just kind of review the, uh, the entire process with you and then you can make a determination whether production scheduling is right for you or certainly after this video you can give me a call and we'll let's uh, review this together, answer any kind of questions you might have. Uh, I'm going to start with a um, the basic concept is you've got released production orders, so you've got orders in the system. In fact, let me just uh, I'm going to bring up a little diagram that I think will help as well. I'm going to start with a production order. This is where everything starts within the scheduling uh, system. And so you've got to have a production order in there. And once the production order is in, and, and think about where these come from. Every business is a little different. Remember, you can add production orders manually. You can add production orders from your sales orders, from a forecast. You can add it through the MRP process. There's lots of ways to add a new production order in the system. But the main thing is once it's in there, we want to get it into the schedule scheduling software. So let's kind of, I'm going to follow through this diagram as we go and let's go back to the software and we'll just kind of show it uh, in real time. So I'm just going to go enter and we will add in uh, for our FG808. This is what I use a lot for my sample presentations. Let's say we're making a thousand of these items and the due date, when does the customer want this? Uh, let's say it's uh, uh, towards the middle of January. So here is, uh, he wants it on the 24th. We might be able to actually do it uh, in less time than that, but that's at least the start. You typically then refresh the production order, and that's going to, as you know, write the lines down here uh, for the uh, anticipated uh, start date on the 10th. So it's uh, uh, the 22nd, because it's two-day uh, grace period, and then uh, the 10th is based on the router. By the way, this routing, the routing that you see here, you're going to put that into your software. This is extremely important because it's got all the dates, uh, the quantity, and then the setup and runtime for each of these operations. That's what's going to determine the schedule, right? You're kind of telling the system how you're going to make this item. So that's going to be set up ahead of time. And now we actually want to uh, put this item into uh, into the schedule. So let's just go in, take a look here. Here is our resource Gantt of this uh, particular um, new production order. It's Notice it's in green. And then uh, we're going to schedule it. So, uh, and I could do it here or I could do it from the um, master um, from the master worksheet which has all production orders in view um, and then we'll just say yes and now what it's going to do is it's basically going to merge this from standby into the ongoing orders that's this green one that you see here it's all color coded for us and you notice there are other operations going on already in the shop and we don't want to clobber those we want to kind of just tuck in where it's appropriate and if there's nothing going on. In fact, it looks like the painting booth is uh, pretty busy with a bunch of other orders, so it's going to be, uh, this operation is going to be pushed out. Actually, there was a little bit of clear time here, but because it follows welding, we couldn't start the painting process until all that welding was done. Okay, so now it's into the schedule. So let's kind of, let me just bring that little diagram back up. So what I basically did here is I said, let's put this into the schedule. It puts it into that standby mode, which you saw up here at the top. And then I hit schedule, which move, moves it into the planning board. Now from there, if I want to uh, uh, make any edits, I can. I can actually use some move and um, move, uh, options and edits and and make changes to the plan if I want to or I can just approve it in other words I can say okay this is a pretty good plan I'm just going to go with that once I approve it then I want to publish that information back to NAV so I'm updating my router information in fact let me show that to you as well so if I'm sitting here on the routing let's look at that again here's the dates and here to the right where, 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 here, here. Okay, so here's the um, planned resource uh, 
information and the, the date information, the starting date information. This is just using the nav date. But we might want to improve this information from the uh, planning dates. We'll come back and look at that here in just a second. I think I should also show it to you from the big board, which is this is just a board for this particular production order. So I'm going to take just one more minute. Let's close out of this production order. And I'm going to go back to the uh, what I call my uh, planning board or planning desktop, which this lets me see all the production orders. Okay, Here's the one we just put in, that 28 in green. And you can then uh, see all the orders. If I scroll down, notice down the left side is our work centers. Across the top is our timeline. And you can adjust this uh, the time scale to week, day, month, whatever you want to view it. But the step that would, I, I want to just kind of complete the process, because this is so simple. In other words, I could uh, do some editing. And if you have questions on that, certainly give me a call. And I'll talk about how you can edit uh, the planning board uh, to your specifications. But we need to publish it. So we want to hit the Publish button to send that information and update our NAV uh, solution. So let's go with the next step, which is to uh, go in here to um, planning and publish so I just hit the publish it says do you really want to do this and I'm gonna say yes and so it's now taking all the data including the new production order that I just put in it just includes that one now and it sends data back to our ERP system and now our uh, released production orders all of them will will now have uh, the new planning dates Okay, the better planning dates, if I come here to the, oh, on the router, uh, come to the right side, the, uh, these dates, you'll see these dates have now changed because I published. So we now have, based on the, this is what the scheduler has said, we can get this job done in this, uh, these time frames. I would recommend that you actually build your production, your master production schedule, the uh, printed report. Uh, based on these uh, uh, scheduling uh, dates here. Also notice too, it's assigned the uh, operations to very specific machine centers, whereas when the router was first put in, it was just to general uh, work centers. But now we're down to very specific uh, machine centers and the operations assigned to them. Now hopefully what I'm showing you here is of, of interest. I mean, the idea is, is production scheduling right for you? I have no idea of knowing whether this is uh, something that you would want to add into uh, your software. It's certainly, as you can see here, fully embedded right in the system. The workflow is very easy. Now, I did go through it very quickly, but you get the idea of how this thing works. And certainly, if you have interest there's only one way to get more information on this thing, and that's to pick up the phone and call me. Send me an email. Let's talk about it. The only way that you're going to learn more is say, I really want to know more about this, and I want a, a personal presentation, Rick. So let's get together and take a look at uh, your specific needs and requirements, and then we'll decide whether uh, this production scheduling software is right for you. Give me a call.